Hi, this is Jack from Alpha Charts with a stocks to watch video. Today is June 27th, 2021. Before we get started, this video is for educational purposes only. These are not recommendations to buy, sell, or hold any stock or security. And I may hold positions in some of the equities mentioned. Know your time frame and risk tolerance. All right, we're going to start real fast with a Bitcoin chart. And again, this is for me the most interesting chart this weekend. Um, as you can see, there's Fibonacci's from the September lows to the April highs. And we are sitting right at this special area. We'll call it, you know, 30,000 or so, right? Um, it's at 33,400 or so right now. And, you know, so moving averages are still bearishly aligned and price is still below all of them. So, we don't know what's going to happen here, but I do think that Bitcoin being the riskiest of risk assets out there, this is going to be a good indication of what may or may not happen next week in the markets, right? I mean, if this rolls over, I think that may be a risk off signal in the markets in general. And I think 20,000, you know, you know, some people were saying 24,000, you know, maybe at the 50% um, retracement, you know, maybe 20,000. Somewhere around here, I think that there could be a waterfall-like moment, something like this, if 30,000 breaks. Right now, 30,000 hasn't broken, and these moving averages are quickly catching up, right, um, to where price is. And they're meeting here. We'll see if we get a rollover, kind of like here, um, or if, you know, we get to chop around and moving averages, you know, start to turn back up again. No one knows, but again, I'm watching this chart very closely, especially going into the opening tomorrow to see what our traders, you know, what are they do? Are they risk on or are they risk off? All right, but let's go forward to why you're here, which is stocks to watch. Um, so I had like 40 or 50 names I was going to share today, but I decided to go with only 13 names and two short squeeze candidates because I'm looking for the best of the best setups that I could find around. And so um, instead of giving you quantity, I want to give you the most quality out there. So let's get started. First one, Fuchu. So uh, Fuchu Holdings, again, we had this beautiful double bottom look to it right here. I mean, just textbook, we are right at the breakout area. Um, Moving averages bullish aligned, good volume profile coming into this right side of the base, looking great. Uh, this is one I like a lot right here. F U T U. Our old friend Palantir is on this list, and so you know here's the IPO VWAP, and you can see that price got above it right in this area right here, and then this was an important area. And price is now above that too. And it's starting to get maybe even a little bit extended from moving averages, which I think is healthy. Kind of did it over here. And again, you had this nice little pullback. So love to see a little drift back into this $26 area, right? A little drift back, let these moving averages catch up just a little bit. And this would be an amazing risk reward right around $26. Um, don't know if we're going to get that or not, but that would make you know a lot of sense. And this would be a beautiful looking base right over here for the potential move higher. You know, remember all time highs, you know, that's about $40 or so. That's a pretty good move right there, right? Nice, what, 50% move from where we're at right now? Not too bad. Uh, next up, CrowdStrike, CRWD. Uh, so this one, again, nice basing pattern, broke out right over here, big volume. And then what's really interesting is the next three days. Now they're not inside days, but they kind of give the feeling of just a consolidation, right? Sideways movement on much lower volume. Like that's exactly what you want to see after a breakout, right? If we don't, obviously, if you don't keep moving higher, the best idea is that you're going to get this type of tight consolidation for three days. That is for me, a really, really strong indicator would love to see maybe one or two more days of this kind of tight consolidation. A lot of these moving averages start to catch up again. Remember, it's just kind of marking time for this white space. Similar to like a situation like this, you know, um, you know, it's done it other places here, 
here it kind of marks time into the moving averages and then moves higher and so uh this is within character of this name and uh and it looks like you know again a really strong setup there's nobody wanting to sell a lot of holders in this good uh good volume coming in at crwd Diana Trace. So this one broke out and kept going. Um, and so now this is, looks like it's time to mark some time now, right? It tried to move lower, it moved higher. It's kind of an indecision bar um, in some ways. You know, it's been good, good volume on this uptrend. It doesn't look like there's many sellers at all, but it's gone a long way, right? This thing has moved, you know, from this low, which is May 12th to here, it's gone up 42%. In uh, in in what in six weeks, that's uh that that's a very quick move. So let it chill out. Let it kind of you know this white space kind of like here, kind of like here. It needs to just kind of mark time, move sideways. Let these moving averages catch up. It may drift back down into them a little bit. That's okay, right? Um, and then wait for the next move higher. So I, I like this especially if you could, you know, you know, and look you know, hit the 23 day right over here, but it's been riding the nine day the whole way. So I think that's kind of your guide, right? Let it kind of drift in nine day catch up. And then that may be a good risk reward area. We'll see that's DT. All right, next up is DoorDash. Now DoorDash is something I've never used personally, but I know a lot of people do. Um, but I like the way this chart is setting up. And this screams of institutional accumulation all along this, this basey area right here. Look at this double bottom, man. It's pretty good looking. Um, IPO VWAP, prices above it, held right there. Prices above this particular area, which I deemed as important. Doesn't mean it is important, right? But it seemed like an area where there was support and resistance, you know, resistance here. Um, kind of broke through. Now it's consolidating, and in some ways, it's very similar to that uh, that crowd strike chart, right? We had the big up on this day, and then we just kind of, kind of marking time, letting the moving averages catch up. I think it's a pretty bullish chart. And look at this: very low volume on these in these you know kind of pullback slash sell off type candles right over here. Um, I like the way this chart looks a lot, and I think that this one has a good potential of moving higher and very slightly this VWAP from the IPO is starting to turn back positive again, which is kind of good, good sign too. Um, but I like the way this chart looks, may need a few more days, but it's clearing up this white space that it's kind of created. And I think this one can move much higher also. Next up, Tiger Direct. Um, this one's a little more annotated than the other ones. So let's go over what I got here. All right, first off, beautiful up right from here, from December, 2000 all the way up into February, amazing move. And then what it do, it pulled back, it created this kind of cup and handle-ish looking area. Now notice here, and I don't care so much on this side of the base, I care more about this side of the base. See how on this side of the base, volume is drying up, right in here, volume is drying up, then boom, big volume here, big volume here, three or four days in a row, big volume. Right. And then in this handle, once again, we're seeing the volume dry up. I like that. that that's a pattern, a volume pattern that I really like. Um, I like the overall pattern in this. I like that it's back to near all time highs. Right. I don't think that the cup needs to get all the way up to here and break out of this all time high area. I think it looks fine. It's a continuation pattern. Uh, this looks pretty good. It came back. It's moving averages have now caught up again. Uh, yeah. I mean, if it gets above, I think this high of the day, which is what was the high 2871. So we'll say 2875. I like round numbers 2875, 2880, somewhere around there. I think this one could be a long, you know, um, I would love to see a, a little gap down, hold this $25 range. That'd be really nice. Right. And again, like many other names, I wouldn't mind if this moves sideways, it's a big range. Remember this is this move, these, this, stock moves in big chunks up and down so know the know the characteristic of the stock you know it could go down 12 percent in a day here's 16 percent down day that's pretty wild right but it could also go up 10 percent in a day right like this day 
So again, it's figuring things out. Uh, again, some more side, sideways action would be welcome. Maybe a little tightening of the chart in here. That would be very welcomed. Similar to Dash and CrowdStrike. Would love to see that. Next up, GLBE. This IPO has been a rocket, right? It started out at what, $24, $25. And just, you know, it's up to 58. So it doubled, right? How many weeks has that been? Two, four, six, seven. Okay, we're working on an IPO high tech flag, right? That'd be pretty awesome. Again, so what is it doing now? It's marking time. Um, notice how it's riding the nine day EMA the whole way. We'd we'll love to see this come into or move sideways into a nine day EMA. Then it would make sense, you know, as far as risk reward goes to see if it holds or not. And that could be how you measure risk. But what do I see here? I mean, I just see just people want to be involved in this particular name over and over and over again. There is no selling to speak of in this chart at this point. There could be, again, the run has been amazing. It's doubled, right? From 25 to 50 or $60 or whatever. Um, so it's amazing looking. Um, let it kind of chill out again. It's kind of moving sideways for the last two, four days. Like the way that looks. Let it maybe tighten up in here. You know, nice little inside day right here. Um, you know, a couple more of these kind of, you know, sideways movements in tight ranges, tighter ranges. I would love to see that. That's GLBE. App APP. App Lovin or App Lovin or whatever you want to call this thing. Um, here's your IPO base. Again, it got tight in here, right? And it got a little wild right there. Uh, but then tightened up again a little bit and started to move higher. You know, once again, it moved higher, kind of came back into the 23 day, held it, making this little consolidation. You know, might be a little loose in there. Um, so it might need to tighten up for a couple of days. But I do like how it's been on relatively low volume on the pullback. That one was a little bit high, but, but nothing crazy. Um, and again, lower volume on some of the down days and much higher volume on some of the up days. Again, may need a little bit more time sideways, but I don't think that much more, right? I mean, the 23 day, you know, you see how it came back. It did touch the 23 day here. So let's wait for maybe the 23 day to catch up. I wouldn't mind if this was kind of, if, they, if these moving averages tightened up just a, a smidge, right? As it moves sideways. And I think then um, we'd love to see it then move higher from there. That's APP. Hassan has been just ridiculous. Um, yeah, fairly new IPO back in October 2000. This is the part that interests me. Create this base, breakout right here. I remember thinking it was a little bit extended, waiting for it to come back in. It never even touched the nine day EMA. I, I never was able to get involved in it. And it's moving even higher now. Again, way extended, not interested in here. It could keep going straight up, No, don't know, but we'll love to see this tighten up just a little bit in here, you know, move sideways, kind of chop around in this range, let the moving averages catch up, maybe around the $58 or so. Um, and, then, uh, and then that's a potential place to be involved. Just ridiculous amount of accumulation going on. Obviously, somebody's building a position in this. Um, and then, Hopefully when they get a little tired, you know, we'll see a little profit taking in here and let it just move sideways. You know, and again, I think the nine day EMA, if you like the 11 day, if you like the 10 day, whatever EMA you're using, a pullback into that EMA or close to it makes a lot of sense. Um, and again, it's a place to manage risk. Again, look at the space between these moving averages. You know, that's a little too wide for me, but this name's got to be on your radar, right? I want to see the moving averages tighten up, right? Tighten up and then, you know, potential breakout, move higher, you know, or a sideways move into something like this and let them catch up to each other. That's Asan, A-S-A-N. Lending Pro, L-P-R-O, uh, which is actually open lending. I want to say Lending Pro every time is actually open lending. Um, so L-P-R-O, here is from the IPO. And what do we have? I mean, 
ridiculous uptrend, right? It was just stair stepped higher the entire way. And it went from, you know, $13 or so, right? All the way up to $42, huge run. And then it marked time, it went sideways. And that's from February to now, um, you know, just chopped within a range. Can you extend this out just a little bit? Chopped within a range. And now it's trying to break out. Now there was a rebalancing day and a lot, a lot of this volume may be from, from um, index rebalancing. I, I don't know the answer to that, but I can say that that's a huge amount of volume being traded and it's trying to break out. Um, you know, again, maybe, and so I won't call it extended at this point, but maybe a smidge. Um, wouldn't mind it marking time near or at all-time highs. That is, it looks like an all-time closing high on this, which is always bullish. And uh, and wouldn't mind seeing a couple inside days here. Let the moving averages catch up uh, a little bit more. And then the breakout to happen, you know, maybe a small pullback, you know, with an inside day. That'd be perfect, right? This is a very large bar right here. Large ranging bar. So uh, So that would be totally within character. Again, sideways consolidation, two or three days, then um, looks really good. And it seems to be a theme, if you notice, I keep saying two or three days of sideways consolidation, and, and that would be a great entry point. We don't know if the market will give that to us or not. Um, next up, KNBE, no before. Uh, this one just came on my radar this weekend, actually, and I love this chart. Look at the weekly. Oh, beautiful. Look at this week. 70% up. That's gigantic. And then what I do afterwards, again, it's kind of working time. You know, maybe a little bit of, of, of profit taking here, a little more volatility. I think it needs to, to tighten up a little bit again. Let the moving averages catch up. It's almost there, right, at $33. So that it's just maybe a couple inside days right here, right? But this fits the characteristic of a high type flag, right? Um, you know, up one, two, three, four. Right and now it's starting to consolidate in here. So we have four weeks up over 100%. We wouldn't mind seeing two to three weeks of tight consolidation with very little give back and then, uh, and then move up higher. This could double again for sure. Get a good entry. And I think that, uh, that this one is, is really, really strong looking. That's KNBE. Here's a Chinese name, Li Auto. Uh, they make cars, I believe. And um, obviously, the auto makes cars. Uh, but this one looks pretty good, too. Here's a here's a bigger picture of this chart. And this has been an important area. It broke out. Try to move higher. Um, I like how there's been a lot of accumulation in this area. Again, just trying to move higher, kind of marking time. Um, not too extended at this point, right? And this could definitely ride this nine day EMA higher, you know, if we see another touch of the nine day, around $30, that would be a potential place to manage risk against again, because it tends, again, the characteristic of the stock and many of the ones that we've watched, like this nine day, again, if you put a 10 day, it's probably gonna look very similar, you know, even the 11 day will probably look similar to this. So whatever your moving average is a short term moving average. But look at this volume, nobody really wants to sell this name the up volume people are accumulating. So Lee Auto, L-I. Um, and the last one in this group that I'm gonna do, I'm gonna work on today is going to be, or present today, is gonna to be NTLA. NTLA is, um, had this, again, gigantic run, you know, wherever you wanna start it from, we'll call it from 18 or $19, all the way up to $90, right? 5X, roughly. Um, and then it just marked time sideways. And, you know, the Mark Minervini VCP, you know, here's your low, here's some, you know, higher lows, here's a higher low, trying to break out. Um, I've been told on Twitter that they have some amazing data coming up that they were actually did in vivo um, CRISPR therapy. So in vivo means that in the body, in real life, not in a, in a lab or a test tube or Petri dish or whatever they use, right? Um, but they did in in vivo in a real real living thing, and so that's a huge 
breakthrough in the CRISPR field. I think I think it's the first time it's ever been done. Um, so, or you know, successfully, um, and been and been presented and written about at least. So it's a big deal. It may gap up on Monday. I, I don't know the answer to that, but this is one that I really do like. And um, and it's again, it's maybe already a little extended. We'll love to see some pullback. But again, this could just gap straight up and, and, and get to that, you know, $100 level. And then we'd have to, again, wait for that consolidation or pullback or whatever it may be. Um, I don't know the answer to this, but just note there is some gap risk in this one to the upside, though. Um, that's NTLA. But again, as a pattern goes, you know, it looks amazing. Um, it just is doing everything right. Nice accumulation in here. You know, a little distribution, but nothing that worries me. Love the VCP, big uptrend, sideways move. It looks amazing. All right, so there we go. Those are 13 names that I really love uh, going into this week. If you notice, most of these names, once again, I said, you know, needed two or three days to move sideways, and then it would be a perfect, you know, a really good buy point. Um, doesn't mean we're going to get it from this market. This market doesn't give us anything we want. Um, so we sometimes we have to... We have to take what the market gives. All right. So I have two short squeeze candidates. Thread up, T dump. Um, again, new IPO name. This was from March and it's got a high short interest. And I kind of like how it kind of came back into the moving averages and had a nice big update here. Again, there's been some selling pressure once it gets above $28, $29 or so into this range. But Maybe this is where the, the sellers are getting tired and this can start to move higher. Nice accumulation though in this IPO, this recent IPO and kind of a nice little IPO, you know, kind of cup and handle-ish, not really, but kind of, if you want to call it something. Um, that's TDUP and the other one is Pubmatic, P-U-B-M. I've been watching this name for a while. There's uh, the IPO VWAP or right there. And um, now price stuck it, right, boom, and moves higher. So I like the way this works. This looks a lot. Again, maybe needs a little sideways movement, but good accumulation in like this right side of the space, right, boom. So it kind of broke out of this area and it's been accumulation all the way. I love that. Again, I would love to see some sideways movement and get a better risk reward entry on this one. But again, high short interest. So this one could potentially move quickly also. All right, so there you go. 13 names, two short squeeze candidates. I really tried to pick the best of the best. I didn't give, you know, the 40 or 50 names on my watch list. I gave a much more condensed version to hopefully um, give you guys, you know, what I'm looking at, very actionable ideas. Um, good luck this week. If you like this content, please like and subscribe to my channel. It does help me. I appreciate it. Leave me some uh, some comments. I try to respond to everybody. Tell me what you like. Tell me what I missed, right? I mean, I'm sure I missed a whole bunch that you're going to tell me, you know, maybe net. That one has been a beast. Again, it didn't make my list this particular week, but I like this one too, kind of. Um, you know, whatever you think, whatever I missed. Uh, the Bitcoin chart. Um, where did yeah, Bitcoin. There you are. This Bitcoin chart, again, right now it's holding the 30,000 level. I think that's the chart to watch this weekend. And it's open 24-7, 365. So, uh, so it gives us what, you know, what we need. We'll see if it can retake the moving average or if it's going to roll over here. No one knows, right? But, uh, but it, gives us, it may give us an indication Monday morning of which way the market wants to go. I wouldn't mind two or three days of tight consolidation in most of these names. Um, that would be actually, I think, really, really, really bullish. Anyway, good luck this week. Like and subscribe. Thank you all for watching. Take care.